my God. This thing actually feels hilarious. It doesn't feel natural at first. Slinging a 761 horsepower force around the rally stage. This is the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo Turbo S, and I've been looking forward to this car for a long time. This is a 761 horsepower electric super estate that for me ticks a lot of boxes. In principle, this car combines power, looks, range, practicality, everything you could possibly want from an electric car. So here's the deal, it's just gone 9 a.m. I've just collected the car from Porsche in Reading. They've said I've got to return the thing by 4 p.m. at the latest in one piece. So that gives me, what, seven hours to really find out whether the Taycan Cross Turismo is the best all-round electric car. Two quick bits of housekeeping. When I collected the car, I reset the trip computer because I want to find out exactly how far I've gone so I can calculate this car's range. Watch till the end of the video to find out how far it's gone. And secondly, I don't know if you noticed, but this is of course the estate version of the Taycan Saloon. And when you have an estate car, there are two things you want to know about it. Number one, can you get a dog in the boot? And number two, is it good for Ikea? So I'm going to Ikea to find a dog. This is a dog and it's from Ikea. His name is Rossig and he's a golden retriever or something. And his job is to demonstrate the size of the boot in the Cross Turismo. It's 447 litres, so plenty of room in there for people who like to carry their pets around in small enclosed spaces. It's actually 40 litres bigger than the version in the saloon. Not quite as big as you get in a Tesla Model S, but definitely bigger than you get in a Ford Mustang Mach-E. Plus, if you want even more space, there's an 80 litre front trunk. So all in all, very practical car. As for space in the back, well, you get a choice of two or three seats, all fold down as you might expect. So even big flat pack furniture shouldn't be a problem. The Cross Turismo also has a higher roof line than the saloon, giving 47 millimeters, that's two inches, more headroom. So it's actually quite spacious. Practicality, tick. Right, we need to talk about this car's looks because obviously it looks very similar to the standard saloon from the front, but the roof line and the way that it extends and then drops down gracefully towards the back, uh, I just, I think it's spot on. I think it's better looking than the saloon and that's saying an awful lot. Let's talk about the range now. I'll give you a quick update. I've been traveling for 35 miles and I've got 187 miles left in the tank, not bad. There are two options when it comes to batteries in the Taycan, a small battery and a big battery, performance battery and performance battery plus. In the Cross Turismo, the standard battery is the larger battery. It's a 93.4 kilowatt hour unit, which according to Porsche, will get you between 240 and 260 miles. Obviously that's more than what was indicated when I started my journey today, but I'm looking at the consumption figures and I'm getting around 40 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And a bit of mental maths tells me that works out to be around 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. In other words, that's good for around 230-ish miles, which isn't bad. The only thing you have to worry about though is the fact that this car has 761 horsepower. So you have to be very, very light on the throttle and exercise a tremendous amount of restraint to maximize your range. Sadly, I don't, I don't, I don't have much restraint. Yeah, I mean, I've got 761 horsepower, 1,050 newton meters of torque. It would be a little bit of a shame if I didn't at least do one launch, right? So I've got my race box, I've got a straight, sport plus mode, brake, launch. Here we go, a little bit of wheel spin, but we are off. Oh my God, this is sketchy. This is properly sketchy. <laughs> what are the scores on the doors? Oh my God, 0 to 62, 
in 4.19 seconds. 4.19 on gravel. Out on the tarmac, it'll do 0 to 62 in 2.9 seconds, which is just mental. It's scarcely believable how violent the acceleration is. My God, this thing actually feels hilarious. It doesn't feel natural at first. It's thinking a 761 horsepower force around the rally stage. Suspension in the Cross Turismo is 20 millimeters higher than you get in the standard saloon. And then if you get the optional off-road package, oh, 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 that raises it an extra 10 millimeters. So you get loads of ground clearance over this jump. No bother whatsoever. There's no scraping. There's a lot of confidence that you get from slinging this car around because you know that it's genuinely built for the rough stuff. The car's got a few different driving modes, including a gravel mode. I'll whack the gravel mode on, that raises the suspension <laughs> and loosens off the traction controls. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Obviously the power is ridiculous, but once you get over that party trick, there's loads of finesse in the handling. Look at that. <laughs> feels predominantly rear wheel drive. I'll chuck it around here and see what happens. You can feel exactly when the back end is coming around. You can feel exactly when you need to counter steer to catch it. And it feels every bit as good as the saloon, if not better. Look at that. It's intuitive, it really is. It doesn't feel artificial. It doesn't feel like a point to point weapon. It feels like it's at home in the corners. And as usual, the steering on this Porsche is absolutely tremendous. You don't really want to be in sport mode out here on a loose surface because the throttle is hyper, hyper aggressive. After that initial intro solo travel, you get that full 700 horsepower deploying. Well, that's what it feels like. And it's easy to spin this car, but if you knock it back into normal mode, it's that little bit more progressive with the application of throttle, and then it becomes so much more manageable. I've got the carbon brakes here, so when you pilot it into a corner, you feel just how impressive those are. Stopping power is absolutely immense, but oh my God, the star of the show is, look at that, is the handling, oh my goodness. People say electric cars can't be engaging, I think you're way off, pal. I really do, because this thing has personality in abundance. What a weapon. Obviously, all of that performance and good looks and practicality doesn't come cheap. This is the Top Dog Cross Turismo Turbo S, and it costs £139,000. But the price doesn't stop there. If you want to add a few options, well then things can get quite outrageous. I have the spec sheet in front of me and it makes some eye-watering viewing, believe me. The off-road design package, which adds these really cool fins all around the car to deflect debris and rubble away from the metal work. Well, that's 1,400 pounds, but it's actually money well spent because I don't know who had this car before me. It wasn't me, Porsche, I promise. They've actually put a massive hole in that fin back there. And if that wasn't there, well then you'd be looking at repairing metal work. So 1,400 quid is money well spent. If you want roof rails, 413 pounds. Electric folding mirrors painted in the body color, 380 pounds. If you want the upper trims of the mirrors finished in carbon, that's a grand. If you want Porsche written on the side, 168 quid. PDCC, 2,300 pounds. Panoramic roof, a grand. The glass in this car is the upgraded glass, which keeps the sound out and the heat in. You want that in order to use the heating less. Well, that costs a grand. Head-up display, grand. Night vision, grand. 360 parking camera, grand. Adaptive cruise control, no, two grand. If you go nuts on the configurator, then the price can skyrocket from 140 grand up to close to 200,000 pounds. If you 
wondering what the Cross Turismo is like to drive when you're not driving like an idiot, then it might come as no surprise to learn that it's almost exactly the same as the saloon. I've driven the saloon countless times and was always impressed by just how comfortable and quiet it was inside. That big glass panoramic sunroof lets in quite a lot of light. The acoustic glass helps everything feel super, super silent. I mean, I wind my window down for a second and it, it actually feels almost too intrusive to wind your window down because it's so serene. As for the cabin, well, if you've seen any of my Taycan reviews, then you know all about the screens inside this car. It's got a big 17 inch curved display just in front of you for your instruments. It's got a second display up here for your navigation, a third display down here in the center console for all your heating, ventilation and climate controls, and then a fourth display for your passenger so they can see the nav or the driving data or whatever else they want. It is screen city in here. On the steering wheel, you get a drive mode selector switch, which lets you cycle between Sport Plus, Sport, Normal, which is what I leave it in most of the time, or range. Now range is very good because it basically limits the car's speed to maximize its efficiency. The suspension's quite smooth as well. It uses Porsche Active Suspension Management, which gives you a choice of different suspension settings. So up here on the screen, you can press the suspension button and cycle between Normal, Sport, and Sport Plus. Sport Plus is a little bit too hardcore for my liking. I leave it in normal almost all the time and it feels superbly well judged. I'm heading back to Reading now, uh, almost out of time. Let me give you a quick range update. I have 65 miles of range left in the battery and it says I've done about 87 miles of driving on this trip, which works out to be about 150 miles in total. So. 150 miles, even when you do a mixture of aggressive driving and normal kind of, you know, sedate driving is actually pretty decent. If I did need to recharge this car, and I don't think I really need to, then I've got two options basically. I could plug it into your ball box at home and it will charge at 11 kilowatts as standard. Or if I wanted to rapid charge this car, it charges at up to 270 kilowatts, which is fast enough for you to go from zero to 80% in 22 and a half minutes. Ultimately then, the Taycan Cross Turismo is an attractive proposition. Porsche sold around 20,000 examples of the saloon in its first full year on sale, even more than the 911. And with this new addition to the family being arguably even better, that number seems destined to keep rising. So we've made it back at Porsche Reading. The final reading on the screen is 148.3 miles traveled with five miles of range to spare, which means well over 150 miles of motorway driving, of launch control and rally driving. Plus, if I wasn't driving like an absolute idiot, I am convinced that this car could easily do 230, 240 miles on a single charge. So what have we learned today? I think we've learned that the car is beautiful to look at. I mean, come on, the car is practical. I've demonstrated that using my Labrador slash Retriever, whatever it is. And the car is obscene amounts of fun to drive. All in all, for me anyway, this is, I mean, it's a sensational package. Is it the best all round electric car right now? I'm gonna have to say, yeah. Your move, Elon. <laughs>